welcome back to Study Onion, and today we're going to be talking about diurnal motion and circumpolar stars. Let's get started! So, stars rise in the east and reach their highest point, or culminate, when they cross the observer's meridian. And then they set in the west. And this is quite similar to the sun. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So, let's just refresh a couple things from the previous topics. So, with respect to the stars, one sidereal day is 23 hours and 56 minutes. One solar day, on the other hand, is actually 24 hours. And this means that stars rise, culminate, and set four minutes earlier, GMT, every single... So let's just talk quickly about local sidereal time. So as most astronomers tend to observe the stars and not the sun, we tend to use local sidereal time over solar time. And solar time is what we use as a society in basing our activities. But local sidereal time helps us predict the place and locations of stars in a more accurate and a more easy way. So to try and work out the local sidereal time, we try and take a look at a star which is exactly on the observer's meridian. Now if we know the right ascension of the star, we can say that the right ascension of that star is equal to the local sidereal time. So for example, if a star with a right ascension of 10 hours 30 minutes lies on the observer's meridian, the local sidereal time must be 10 hours 30 minutes. So let's have a little look at a thing called hour angle. So the hour angle is the time since the object was crossing the observer's meridian. So this is basically telling you how long it's been since an object has crossed the observer's meridian. And to calculate this, we take the hour angle as the local sidereal time of the observer minus the right ascension of that particular star. If the hour angle is negative, it determines how long an observer would need to wait before you can see the star at your meridian. So if we look at this diagram we can see that a star at 19 hours 50 is yet to culminate and will culminate in 5 hours and 5 minutes. However if we look at a star at 12 hours 15 it has already culminated and it has been 2 hours 30 minutes since it has culminated. So if the hour angle is negative, the star is yet to culminate and it determines how long you need to wait before you can see the star at your meridian. So this is another formula that you need to learn. The altitude of NCP, which is the North Celestial Pole, or the South Celestial Pole, if you're in the southern regions, is equal to the observer's latitude and if you know the observer's latitude you are able to calculate lots of different things. So since Polaris is only 0.5 degrees from the North Celestial Pole we can use that as a sufficient approximation of the NCP and thus we can calculate that the altitude of Polaris is equal to the latitude of the observer. So diurnal motion is the apparent motion of an object which is due to the daily rotation of the Earth. If we look towards the north, the stars will appear to rotate in the sky with a period of 23 hours and 56 minutes, as we had covered before, and that is equal to one sidereal day. So, circumpolar stars. If a star or a celestial object is located close to the northern celestial pole, it will not set below the observer's latitude, and it is said to be circumpolar. 
So it's just important to note with these stars that obviously they are unable to be seen during the day. However, they are always present. The only reason that they are unable to be seen during the day is because the sun's brightness outshines them in the mornings. So, the formula that we use to figure out whether a star will be circumpolar at that particular latitude is if a star's declination is greater than 90 degrees minus the observer's latitude, the star will be circumpolar. And circumpolar stars will cross the meridian twice a day at upper and lower transits. And just as a note, Upper transit is when the star is actually culminating and the star is at the greatest altitude and therefore highest in the sky when the star culminates and this means that it is the best time to observe the star in the night sky. So in terms of visualising how circumpolar stars work, let's have a little look at this animation. So in this animation you can see different trees and what this basically can show you is how the star will remain in the night sky throughout the day. So the star will always remain there, it is just outshone by the sun. And this is something you can see in terms of it never going below the observer's latitude where the horizon is the line at the edge of the image. And you can see this in a time-lapse image on the right-hand side, where you can see stars which clearly demonstrate where the North Celestial Pole is, as well as how the star would look and the pattern that the star would trace throughout a day. And this is why we call them circumpolar stars. So, looking at how to calculate the altitude of a star. So the first step or first formula that you must know is that the altitude of a star at upper or lower transit can be calculated by the observer's latitude plus or minus 90 minus the star's declination. So the first thing to get straight is that when the plus is used and when the minus is used. So the plus is used at upper transit and the minus is used for lower transit. So, another way that this formula can be written is altitude of the star at upper or lower transit equals observer's latitude plus or minus the star's co-declination. Now, the co-declination, or polar distance, is just equal to 90 minus declination. So, to quickly summarise all of the formulas, the first one is that local sidereal time is equal to your right ascension. The altitude of the north celestial pole and Polaris is equal to an observer's latitude. Co-latitude is 90 degrees minus latitude and co-declination or polar distance is equal to 90 minus declination. A star is decided to be circumpolar if the star's declination is greater than 90 minus the observer's latitude or the star declination is greater than the observer's co-latitude. The altitude of a star at upper or lower transits is equal to the observer's latitude plus or minus 90 minus the star's declination. Or altitude of the star at upper or lower transit can also be equal to the observer's latitude plus or minus the star's co-declination. Hopefully that helped you get a better grasp of some of the difficult topics within celestial observation. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next week. But for now, bye!